Hi, I'm Madison Ward, one of the Arts and Culture Assistant Desk Editors. And I'm Guillermo Molero. I'm a city-state writer, but I'm a resident film snob for these few months. With the Oscars poised to be presented this Sunday, it's time to get serious about watching those critically acclaimed films that you keep putting off. To help you narrow it down, we watch almost every single Oscar-nominated movie. If you want to know my top five favorite Oscar nominees of the year that I think you absolutely should not miss, this is it. First, please do yourself a favor and watch Nomadland. Absolutely stunning. Then, definitely check out Minari. Collective is also amazing. So is Sound of Metal. And of course, the hilarious four at two subsequent movie film. On my end, I definitely think you should start with Nomadland because it's going to win Best Picture. Then you should head to Judas and the Black Messiah. You can watch Cool Bodies Ida, which is going to get snuffed, uh, Sound of Metal, which is a terrific movie, and Time. Those are my five. The number one movie that you have to watch is Nomadland. It's easily going to win Best Picture. There is no doubt about it. I mean, from Francis McDormand's beautifully understated and emotional performance and Chloe Zhao's skilled directing, the wonderfully soft score, the wonderful, the gorgeous cinematography. I mean, everything about this movie is beautiful, and there is no doubt in my mind that it will win Best Picture. I would, I would bet the ranch on it. Another Oscar-nominated movie you don't want to miss is Borat's subsequent movie film. With Sasha Baron Cohen and Maria Bakalova traveling across the United States, pranking gullible people, and making political statements about America's mishandling of the pandemic and criticizing political figures, Sorry, Rudy. <laughs> it's definitely a film that you don't want to miss. Judas and the Black Messiah was another terrific movie that came out this year. I mean, it was Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, Dominique Fishback, Jesse Plemons. It was an all-star ensemble, and each and every one of them went leaned all the way into their role, especially Kaluuya, who will definitely be walking away with an Oscar after Sunday night. Another movie you don't want to miss is My Octopus Teacher. Following a diver who films an octopus's life who lives in a South American kelp forest, this is a wholesome, entertaining story that shows the connection between man and nature in a beautiful, powerfully told way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat here and I'm gonna do three movies instead of one because I think there's just too, there are too many good movies to watch. So I'll start with Quo Vadis Ida, which is a gut punch of a movie. It just tremendously emotional and very intense about the Srebrenica massacre in Bosnia and uh, a mother working as a UN translator who will do anything to save her family from the Bosnian Serb forces. I think that uh, Jasna Djuricic did a terrific job as the lead and if you do not cry by the end of the movie you are not human. Second movie, Time, brilliant documentary about the criminal justice system and race and the role that that plays in the United States. Uh, tells the story of Rich Fox, who has been waiting 20 years to try and get her husband out of prison. And it's just a very touching story of love and perseverance. And the third movie that I wanted to talk about is Sound of Metal, which if you haven't seen or haven't heard of, Shame on you, because that movie is outstanding. I mean, the the way that sound is used in that movie is something I've never seen before. It's very unique, and it's just telling the story of a heavy metal drummer that's coping with becoming deaf, and his mentor who helps him sort of go through that, but the way they use sound there is really impressive. And then another documentary I'd like to talk about is Collective, which follows the aftermath of a, club, of a fire at a club. It's an incredible foreign film that shows government corruption, how people handle situations like this, and they found out the truth about what was really going on afterwards. There were so many movies this year, so many great movies released this year, and you can kind of tell that the Academy missed out on a few, like Never Really, Sometimes Always, mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier. Um, Palm Springs, I think they missed out on that. Dick Johnson is dead. Um, I think some of the nominations they messed up on too. Uh, the Trial of the Chicago Seven, did not deserve a Best Picture nomination. It, it just wasn't that good. And I did I know, love yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen's performance in that, but I also loved Palm Springs. I watched it twice, actually, and I thought I loved its take on like a modern day Groundhog Day. Yeah. It was very fun to yeah. watch. Sasha Baron Cohen was great in that movie, but I wanted to punch Eddie Redmayne in the face. <laughs> and when he's a, like, he's a protagonist, like we're supposed to be rooting for Eddie Redmayne, and I found it difficult to do uh. so. I still love Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you want to catch up on our Oscars coverage, such as our movie reviews, our snubs and surprises column, our predictions for the winners, go to www.dailytarheel.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Daily Tar Heel. Thank you guys for watching.